UFC 283 just finished and we have a new champion of the world. The first ever champion that came from the Contender Series. I am, of course, talking about Sweet Dreams, Jamal Hill. He won the vacant light heavyweight title fight in an epic fight against Glover Teixeira. Now, listen, my respect for Glover Teixeira is endless. What that man just did, what he just enjoyed, the toughness that he showed. He is a legend personified. I mean, come on. It was clear from the get-go. Jamal was faster, okay? He was fresher. He was younger. He was longer. He was more dangerous on the feet. He could stop the takedowns, and he was finding the mark on every single occasion almost. Glover Teixeira was getting beaten. Pretty soundly, he was getting beaten to a pulp. His face was getting busted up. There was blood pouring from his eyeballs, right? Did the man give up? Did he stop? Did he look for a way out? No, he continued to fight every single minute, fighting tooth and nail, trying to get the takedown, trying to land big shots, and keeping Jamal Hill honest, always threatening. I mean... I am just blown away. The respect I have for Glover Teixeira is absolutely endless. What a legendary career. Now, listen, of course, the night belongs to Jamal Hill. That was sensational. A record of 12-1, and one, now 13-1. and one. He only made his UFC debut, pardon me, mixed martial arts debut in 2017. So by many accounts, in many ways... The man is still kind of a novice, but he's now the champion of the world. He sits on the throne in the light heavyweight division. And that fight right there, my God, just unbelievable. I mean, the combinations were beautiful. As I say, the takedown defense was on point. Yeah, he got taken down a couple of times. Even in the fifth round, he was taken down. He was mounted, but he managed to reverse it, okay? Excellent grappling defense. Excellent takedown defense. On the feet, he was deadly. But he's going up against Glover Teixeira, a man that has no quit. Some of those shots would have taken other people out. We've seen some of the knockouts that Jamal Hill, uh, Jamal Hill has delivered. We've seen the Johnny Walker knockout time after time after time. That is the kind of power he possesses. And that is the kind of chin that Glover Teixeira has. Those head kicks were just brutal. But did Glover Teixeira look for a way out? No. Lost for words, so inspired, and I am just so grateful that I got to watch Glover Teixeira. I mean, the man is just a legend. But still, as I say, the night deserves, belongs, should I say, to Jamal Hill. Incredible what he achieved, and I cannot wait to see what he does going forward. As we saw after the fight, Glover Teixeira hung up the gloves, and it's the right decision. The reality is... He looked a little old in there, you know, but the heart, the will, the desire, that was all there. And it often is in fighters, but sometimes the body starts to fail you. Maybe that back and forth war with Yuri Prohaska, maybe that caused him to slow down a little bit. Maybe he left a piece of his body, a piece of his soul, a piece of his desire left in Singapore, perhaps. Maybe not, maybe not, but wars take it out of you. They take a toll and it is a heavy burden, but still... Uh, he put down the gloves. That was it. A beautiful end. Yes, it would have been great if he became the champion again. Okay? But, you know, not everything ends in a fairy tale storybook ending. Okay? But that was still beautiful. And the show of respect, because in the co main event, which I'll get to in a minute, Brandon Moreno defeated Davison Figueiredo. He had to sprint out of the octagon because the Brazilian crowd were pelting him with bottles and beer and whatever they could find. What did Glover Teixeira say? He said, no. He said, listen, do not do that. Show respect. I am going to walk Jamal out of this arena. And that was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in one of the most beautiful sports on the planet. I'm lost for words. Glover Teixeira is the nicest guy, the, the classiest person ever, and an absolute monster inside the Oxford. So we thank you, Glover, for all the memories. And Jamal Hill, congratulations, my friend. I mean... The story that he has, the backstory, where he comes from, the adversity that he's fought through. I mean, we saw the emotion on him. He broke down in tears, okay? He wasn't supposed to do this. He wasn't supposed to sit on the light heavyweight throne, the champion of the world, with an opportunity to now make millions and millions of dollars, world famous with the title of UFC light heavyweight champion of the world. But look at what he achieved. Look what I achieved. That's what he said. Anything is possible. If you work hard, you can achieve anything. And it is so true. So all of you out there, remember that. If there's something you're trying to do, look at Jamal Hill. Look at what he has achieved. I'm just blown away. Incredible. An amazing fight. I just wish it wasn't 50-44 on all scorecards. But it was. Jamal was one step ahead for the most part. He was fantastic. He was. He looked fast. He looked sharp. He looked deadly. He looked powerful. He looked 
like the light heavyweight champion of the world. Now, co-main event, I mentioned it a second ago, Davison Figueredo, Brandon Moreno, going at it for a fourth and final time. No, there will not be a fifth. There will not be any kind of case for a fifth match because the eye closed, because it ended because of an injury. And no, it wasn't an eye poke. There was a little bit of discussion about that. But the reality is, Brandon Moreno, he was a little bit ahead the whole time. He was one step ahead. He was faster. He was more energetic. He was emptying the gas tank. He was going for it more, landing the better shots. Davidson, of course, he's dangerous. You know, he's a little nasty gremlin. He's got knockout power. He's got great submissions. He was squeezing that guillotine. And he was trying. He was trying. But the night belonged to Brandon Moreno. And I don't see anybody beating him anytime soon. Um, you know, the shot that landed, the knuckle, went right in the eye. It might have been the thumb. But when the knuckle goes in the eye, it is so painful. And we saw that the eye swelled up straight away. Of course, the doctor looked at it, stopped the fight in round three. And it was the right decision. I mean, you can't fight in mixed martial arts with one eye. I mean, what kind of crazy person fights in the UFC with one eye? It can't be done. Davidson Figueredo said he's going to move up to 135. I think that's the correct choice. He was starting to slow down. That has cost him in the past these terrible weight cuts that he has to endure. He's going to go up to 135 at Bantamweight, and I'm excited to see what he can do there. Congratulations, Brandon Moreno. A beautiful performance and a way to really close out that rivalry. Now, before that, we were treated to a perfect display of technical brilliance from Gilbert Burns when he took on Neil Magny. Neil Magny, very tall, very long, very dangerous. Gilbert Burns, he strategically picked him apart, took him down, and he executed it perfectly. What he did, he took his time. He took his time. He stayed on the outside. Because Neil is so long, you don't want to be in the striking range where you can't hit him, but he can pick you apart. So Gilbert stayed on the outside. He was very patient, you know, because you want to get in there. You want to start landing those shots. He's known for his big power. But you've got to be strategic. And that's exactly what he was. He waited and waited and waited. He threw a few shots. He was pawing with the jab. He was waiting for the correct moment. And when the correct moment presented itself, he pounced like a cat. Closed the distance, got the body lock, took him down. From there, he systematically broke him down. The jiu-jitsu was on point and he got the head and arm triangle. And that was that. Called out Colby Covington next. I think that was a tremendous call out. Makes a ton of sense. It's wild that Gilbert Burns and Colby have not fought before. That was the perfect call out. And for Gilbert Burns, if he can get through Colby Covington, he has to fight for the belt after that. Congratulations to Gilbert Burns. One of the nicest guys on the UFC roster. The man's, he's just awesome. Everything about him. Such a fan of that guy. Anyway, before that, we had the only female fight on the main card, Jessica Andrade going up against Lauren Murphy. She got the job done via decision, but I actually tweeted out at the time, please stop the fight, corner throw in the towel because Jessica Andrade lived up to the nickname. I say she's the most... Uh, the most violent female on the roster. Oh my God. She was swinging like an absolute maniac. And Lauren Murphy, we got to give her credit. Some of the shots that she took, right? The beating that she took. I mean, come on, that is not an easy thing to do. But the reality was that Lauren was trying to use straight shots and they didn't have much power. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. They didn't have much power. So Jessica didn't, she didn't fear the consequences of going forward and swinging reckless shots. And the shots she was throwing, hook after hook after hook, with kind of reckless abandon. Because as I say, she wasn't scared. She didn't fear the consequences of what Lauren Murphy could do to her. Not only with the hands, she was busting up that leg. Heavy, heavy low kicks. I mean, it was a beautiful performance by Jessica Andrade. Reminded the world what she's capable of. Lauren Murphy, commiseration. She's very tough. She's had some amazing performances. But tonight was not her night. And then, of course, opening up the main card, Johnny Walker defeated Paul Craig in the first round. I love Paul Craig. He's a friend of mine. I'm such a fan of him. One of the nicest guys you will ever meet. But Johnny Walker, I, I don't know him as well, but he's a great guy. I've got nothing bad to say about him. And tonight, it was his night. Paul looked a little tentative. Of course, Johnny Walker is extremely explosive and unpredictable. He has some crazy power that he generates from almost no wind-up and he'll throw weird spinning back fists and things like that and he can catch you. So Paul correctly was being tentative. He was taking his time. Um, I'm trying to remember the sequence now. I think, I think he caught a leg. 
caught a leg of Johnny Walker. Or did Johnny Walker catch one of his legs? I do actually forget. My apologies. Someone had hold of a leg. I'm not sure if it was Paul or Johnny. And then Johnny, boom. I think it was Johnny Walker on one leg. Yeah, Johnny Walker was on one leg. Paul had grabbed a hold of it. Boom, and he was landing great shots. Two or three shots. Paul Craig hits the deck, but he's hanging onto the leg. And from there, there was a couple of big shots. And I think it was like kind of a backwards elbow. And then from there, they were kind of tangled up because Paul had a hold of the leg still. And because of that, he couldn't really defend himself too well. There's a few more shots and the referee had to step in and save him from any more punishment. So congratulations to Johnny Walker. I mean, the man's a freak of nature. He is uh, capable of so much. And he is championship material one day. I mean, he burst on the scene with such hype. You know, but then, you know, missed a step, failed a few times, you know, didn't get the job done on a few fights, but he's still a young man. He's still got a bright future. And Paul Craig, head up, my friend, chin up, you know, commiserations, but we learn in our defeats. He's a class act. He really is. He'll be back for sure. Now, the fight before that, the prelim headliner, it was a special moment. Shogun, Maurizio Shogun Hua. It was his final fight in the octagon. I was hoping his swan song would have a fairy tale ending, but sadly that was not the case. Iho Pateria, 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 Iho Pateria. Got the job done, round one. Shogun was looking good, right hand, left hook. That's always been one of his favourite shots, but on this occasion, Pateri landed a few good ones, kind of uh, got the better of some grappling situations, got on top, pounded him out, and the referee had to stop it. It was sad to see, but the reality is Shogun's been around forever, and the wars he's been in, it's all taken its toll, it's all wound up to too much. He can't go on forever. Father time is always undefeated. So tonight we saw two legends retire, Maurizio Shogun, who were... Thank you for the memories. I did a video earlier. I did a live and I spoke about it on there. So check that out. So I won't go into too much detail, but Shogun inspired me. He inspired so many martial artists, fans, fighters, anybody that's watched the UFC, anybody that's watched mixed martial arts, his career in pride. I mean, it's just... It's just unbelievable what that man did. The violence he provided, some of the wars he was involved in. And as I say, the memories. So thank you. All the best to you in your retirement. All the best to Glover Teixeira in his retirement. Jamal Hill, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see who the next fight's going to be. I don't think it's going to be Yuri Pahaska. Is it going to be Anthony Smith? We don't know. The only thing holding Anthony back is that he is coming off a loss, so maybe not. Maybe it might be a Jan Blachowicz, maybe a Magomed Ankalaev. I'm not sure. We shall see. But there it is. There's my wrap-up of the main card. A great main card, a great pay-per-view to kick off the year. The next one's going down in Perth, Australia. I will be there. It is Islam Mahachev taking on the pound-for-pound pound number one, Alexander the Great Volkanovsky, I cannot wait for that one. But still, there it is. My friends, subscribe and ring the bell. Hope you well. Hope you enjoyed the main card. I hope you enjoyed the fights. Let me know what you thought of them in the comments. And I'll see you soon. All right.